All right, so let's install the brand new WordPress theme. So we'll go to our WordPress dashboard, go to Appearance, Themes, click on Add New at the top, click on Upload, click Choose File, go to our Downloads directory where the theme zip file is saved, select it, click Choose, and then click Install Now. And then we're going to click Activate. Now that our WordPress theme is installed, we see this message that we need to install all items. We'll click on that, and this is going to install all of the plugins that this theme uses. And now we see that we need to enter our license key to enable auto updates. This theme will work without the license, but if we want to get automatic updates straight to our WordPress dashboard, we'll just enter the license key that we got when we purchased the theme. Now, if you don't have your license key, you can always go to movepluggins.com, send us a message, and we'll send your license key out to you right away. Just make sure that you include your order ID so that we can track down which license is yours. So I'm going to paste in my license key and click Submit License. Now, my automatic updates are going to appear right in my WordPress dashboard, and I won't have to go hunting for them. The next thing we're going to do is go down here to where it says MP Stacks, and we're going to say Manage Stacks. And now we're going to make a new stack and call it Footer. So let's create the Footer stack. And you can see that we've created that here now. We're going to use this later. The next thing we're going to do is set up our home page. So let's go to Pages and click on Add New. We're going to call this page Home, and then we're going to click on Add Stack. Create a new stack and call it home and click make a new stack and then say insert stack. And what we've done is we've made a new stack called home and inserted it onto our home page. So we'll click publish. And now we need to make it so that this home page shows up on the front of our site when people visit. So we'll go to settings, reading, and instead of our front page displaying our latest posts, we're going to change that to say a static page and then the front page is going to show our home page, which we just created, and then we'll click Save Changes. So now let's look at what the site looks like. So we'll go to the top left corner and click on Visit Site. And you can see that we've got our home page here with our empty stack that we just created. And we've also got comments showing on our home page, which isn't something that we may necessarily want. So let's go up to the top and click on Edit Page. And then in the top right corner, we'll click on Screen Options. Make sure that this discussion box is checked. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom and uncheck Allow Comments and Pingbacks, and we'll click Update. Now if we view our site by clicking Visit Site in the top left, you can see that the comments are gone on our home page. So now let's go and make a couple of bricks which we'll display on our home page. Let's make one for our home page header. So we'll click Add a Brick to this stack, and we'll call it Home Page Header. For the first content type, we're going to select Text, and the second content type for now, we're going to just choose None, and then for Alignment, we'll choose Centered. We'll scroll down, and for text color 1, let's make it white, and let's make the text size 45 pixels. And then in here, I'm going to say this is the header tagline for my website. I'll scroll down to the second text area for this text content type, and say this is a description of my website that goes into slightly further detail. You'll obviously enter your own information there, but this is just demo content. And we're going to make the text color white for the second area as well. And we're going to make the text size 20 pixels. Now let's set the background for our header area. So we'll go up to the top sort of on the side here where it says brick background settings. And then for the background image, I'm going to click upload. And then I'm going to browse to the picture that I want to use for my header background. So I'll click select files, go to the directory where my image is, select it, click Upload, and then I'm going to click Use Item. And now that image will be used for the background of this area. So now let's set the size of this area of this header. So we'll scroll down, and under Content Types Area Min Height Above Slash Below, let's enter 100 pixels. And what this is going to do is it's going to put 100 pixels on top of our text and 100 pixels below our text. And so we'll publish this so you can see what I mean. Click Publish. And now you can see that we've got our header brick here, and there's 100 pixels on top of our text and 100 pixels below. But I want there to be quite a bit more space here so that we can see more of our background image and that it just creates a nicer layout. So we can double click on this brick to open up the brick dialog, and we'll scroll down back to where it says content types area min height above slash below, and change this from 100 pixels to 300 pixels. And that's going to put 300 pixels on top of our text and 300 pixels below our text. So we'll scroll back up to the top and click Update. And now you can see that our header brick is filling almost the whole page, and it looks really nice. So let's go ahead and add our next brick for the home page just underneath this. And we can do that by going to the bottom right-hand corner and clicking on Add Brick After. 
Now we'll say second home page brick. And for the first content type, let's choose text. And for the second content type, we'll choose image and the alignment will choose centered. So now let's scroll down. And for our text color one, we're gonna set it to be a slightly dark gray and set the text size to be 45 pixels again. And here we can put a little bit more information. So we'll say this is some more information about my website. And we'll scroll down. And for text area two, we'll change the text color to be a slightly off gray as well. Set the text size to be 20 pixels again. And say this is a description that goes into further detail about my website. Again, this is all going to be changed when it's your own content, but this is just for the demo. And we'll scroll down here in the image content type area, which we chose above, we'll select the image that we want to use. So I'm going to click on upload file. And then I'm going to browse to the image that I want to use. Now I've made an image in Photoshop of a laptop, which shows some things on the screen and it cuts it off at the bottom. So you'll see what that looks like in a second here. I'll just click on use item. And I'm going to set the max image width for this to be 1000 pixels. So now we'll scroll up and click on publish. And you can see that the second brick is now displaying right above our header brick. Now I want there to be some more margin above and below the text here in our second brick to push the image here down. So let's click on edit this brick or we can double click on the brick to open the dialog. We'll scroll down. But this time, because we want the image to actually hug the edge of our brick, we want the laptop to look like it's coming out of the brick, we're actually going to change our content types area min height above slash below to be zero so that there's no margin on the bottom. And that actually changes it so that there's no margin anywhere. So now we need to adjust each margin individually. So we'll open up this content type margins area, which gives us more control. And the first content type, we want there to be about 200 pixels on top of margin, 200 pixels on the bottom of margin, and we'll match that for the margin of our image and the margin at the bottom because we want this image to hug the bottom of the brick we're going to set that to be zero so zero margin at the bottom and we'll scroll up and click update and now you can see that there's a lot of nice breathing room here above and below our text so we've got our header text and then that image that we made which now hugs the bottom of this brick really nicely and it kind of looks like the laptop is just coming right out of the bottom there and we can add more bricks again just by clicking add brick after and repeat that process and make as many bricks as we need for our home page. And we can repeat this process actually for every other page as well. We can make completely customized pages just using bricks and background images and colors and all of that. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the options that are available to us to style this theme generally. So let's go up to the top and click on customize. And this is where we can upload our logo image and control our header, button colors and things like that. So over here on the left hand side under logo options, I'm going to click on no image and then I'm going to select the file that I want to use for my logo. Now I've already made my logo image, which is a PNG file, which is about 300 pixels wide. And I'm actually going to set it to be half that under logo width. So I'll say 150 pixels, which is going to shrink the image down. So it's going to look good on a retina screen. Now my logo is actually hidden here because the header is set to be white by default. So we'll close up the logo options area and open the site header area and change the header background color to be sort of a gray. And I want it to be a little bit see-through. So I'm gonna say under header background color opacity, I'm gonna set this to be 0.5. And so zero is completely see-through and one is not see-through at all. So by setting it to 0.5, it's gonna be a little bit see-through. And if I scroll down a little bit further here, I've got more options for text colors for my navigation. And here under bump site below header, we can check this or uncheck this and watch what happens when I uncheck it. It's actually going to bump our site up underneath the header. So the header is sitting on top of our site, giving it this kind of a cool look. But if we want our header to be completely separate, we just have to leave this checked and it'll actually bump the site below it. And the header is going to grow and shrink based on the size of our logo. So it's really easy for us to set this and customize it without needing to worry about a lot of that stuff. So I'm going to actually turn this option off so that our header is over top. And then I'm going to scroll up a little bit more here and I can close this area now. Now let's go ahead and set our footer. Remember at the start of this tutorial, we created a footer stack. Let's use that now. So we'll go to the footer area, open that up and choose the stack that we want to use for our footer, which is footer. And now if we scroll down, 
you'll see that this has been added to the bottom saying that there are no bricks in our stack. Well, that's because we haven't added any bricks to our footer stack. So we can click Save and Publish in our customizer and close that. And now let's set the footer. So we'll scroll down, click on Add a Brick to this stack. And this stack's gonna appear at the bottom of every page on our website. So we can add a lot of bricks or we can just add one, which I like to do for a footer. So let's say footer brick. For the first content type, let's choose text. Second content type, let's choose none. And we'll say centered. And then we'll scroll down, set our text to be gray. Set the font size to be about 18 pixels. And then I'm just gonna say copyright my website and then the year. And you can put more information in here as you need it in your footer. But it, you have total control over your footer because it's just another brick in a stack. So you could even give it a background image or a background color if you needed. So we'll scroll up and click Publish. And now you can see at the bottom of our website, we have Copyright My Website. I'm going to actually make it so that there's a little bit more space, though, above and below this. So let's click on Edit This Brick. We'll scroll down to content types area min height above slash below and let's set there to be 50 pixels on top of the content and 50 pixels below and click update. Now if we scroll down you can see that there is some more space here in between the top and the bottom of our brick. Now there is a little bit of a white gap in between here but that's just here because we're logged in and this edit button is here to help us edit the page. That'll be gone when logged out so the viewers of your site won't see that gap. And the last final thing for this tutorial is to add a menu to our theme. So we'll click over here on the right where it says add a menu. It actually just opens the menus page, which you can also get to by going to appearance menus if you ever get lost. So now let's go ahead and set up a brand new menu. So we can click create menu. And it's got two home pages in here for some reason, but I'm just going to remove these. And now let's add our home page to our menu. So we'll click on home add to menu and then as I add new pages they'll show up here and I can repeat that and just add them to the menu and drag and drop them to reorder so let's click save menu and make sure that this theme locations primary navigation box is selected because that's what's going to make this menu show up on our home page in the header actually for all of our pages in the header so let's click on save menu and now we'll go to our site take a look and you can see that our menu is here it says home and as we added other things to our menu, those would show up here as well. We've got our logo image, we've got our header brick, and we've got another brick below that, as well as our footer, and the ability to grow and create as many pages as we possibly need. This theme is also compatible with the Easy Digital Downloads plugin, which you can install on the plugins page in your WordPress dashboard. And there's lots of tutorials available for how to set up Easy Digital Downloads and to start selling things on your website. But there are designs built in for that plugin, so you can get an online store up and running in no time. And if you have any other questions, make sure you head over to movepluggins.com and either open a support ticket or send us a message and we'll be glad to help you out.